In each AP Physics B exam, there is usually at least one lab problem in the free response section. So I will go over some types of questions you may see in those lab problems. Let's look at the equipment and procedure related questions first. For example, in problem number three of the 2011 exam, we're told that the purpose of the lab is to measure the width of a very narrow slit. You're given a list of items to choose from, and you're asked to sketch the lab setup and to outline the experimental procedure. One of the items provided is a laser pointer with a known wavelength. So hopefully this reminds you that you can use the single slit diffraction experiment to figure out the slit width. If you are not familiar with the lab well enough to choose the items needed right away, you may wish to first look at the theory or equation you can use. For single slit diffraction, the setup is like this. We shine a light at a slit, and on the screen, we would see patterns that include a central maximum that is twice as wide as the other maximum. We can use the d sine theta equals to m lambda, and this d is the width of the slit, the one we're looking for. So we just have to have theta, m, and lambda to plug in, and we can calculate for the slit width d. If we choose the laser instead of the filament lamp, we would have the wavelength lambda to plug in. There's nothing here that can be used to measure the angle theta directly. So we have to use the sine theta, that is y over l, for small angles, or use tan theta equals to y over l for any angle. This means that we need something to measure the y, the distance between the patterns on the screen, and the l, the distance to the screen. So we need the laser, a screen, a meter stick, and or a metric ruler. Depending on what y we measure, we have to use appropriate m for it. So basically, for a lab problem, if we don't immediately know which items to include in the setup, we can write the equations first and see what we have to plug into the equation to find what we need. Use the equations to help us identify the devices and the setup. Graph questions. Sometimes a problem provides a graph with data points already on the graph, and we are asked to draw a small, smooth line or a smooth curve to match the data points. For example, problem number 6 on the 2004 Form B exam. A graph with these dots were given, and the question asks us to draw a best fit curve. So we need to make a smooth curve. Do not connect dots. Same thing if the question calls for the best fit straight line. Once the best fit curve or straight line is drawn, we usually do not use the dots again. For example, the next question for this problem asks for the wavelength shift at a 120 degree angle. We would just read off the graph using the best fit curve for 120 degrees do not read off the data point dots, because a smooth best fit curve usually helps us even out some errors in the experimental data. Plot straight line and use slope to find things. Physicists often like to plot their experimental data into graphs with straight lines, and then use the slope of the line to find things. For example, in problem number one of the 2009 exam, a block of mass m attached to a spring is compressed by x and then let go. The block is observed to rise by a height h. The student repeats the experiment with the same spring compression x, but a different mass m each time. The height h is measured for each mass. And here are the data. We're asked what quantities to plot in a graph so the slope of the best fit straight line can be used to find the spring constant k. For this kind of questions, again, we can write an equation to relate the independent variable and the dependent variable. In this case, the independent variable is the one we change the mass m. The dependent variable is the height h, because the height can change when the mass attached to the spring changes. In this case, we can use the conservation of energy. The 1 half kx squared stored in the spring gets turned into the mgy of the box. 
and the, of course, in this case, the y is the h. Because the independent and the dependent variables are m and h, the two axes should be some form of m and some form of h. For example, if I wish to use h for y, that means I can solve this equation for h, which will give us, I just have to divide by mg on both sides. So this will be 1 over 2g times kx squared times 1 over m. So this is my y, and uh, if I use this one for x, I would have a first degree equation. So this will be y equals to slope times the x, and the slope of the line would be this value. By the way, this x is just the horizontal value, that's the y is the vertical value, the vertical axis. This x is not the same as that one. Okay. I just mean to match this equation to this format. So then if I use this as my vertical axis, this is my horizontal axis, then this will be the slope. So if I plot this straight line, the slope will be this value right here. And because we know the g, and we know by how much we compress the spring, that means that if we can find the slope from the graph, we will be able to find the k, the spring constant. Of course, we can also use the mass m for the vertical axis. In that case, we just have to solve this equation for m. So m, I just have to divide by gh on both sides. So I'm going to get 1 half kx squared times 1 over g times 1 over h. That means if my vertical axis is the mass, then I should have 1 over h for my horizontal axis. In that case, this would equal to the slope. So if we can find the slope of the graph, then we just set the slope equal to this, and we'll be able to solve for the spring constant. Now, when asked to find the slope, always remember to use the best fit line to find the rise and run, and then the slope. Please do not just use two dots to find the slope, even if those dots look like they are almost on the line. We need to use the line to find the slope. Now, let's look at another example. This experiment is used to find the index of refraction n of a semicircular glass block. We shine a laser beam at the center of the semicircle. As the beam enters the glass, it slows down and the angle gets smaller. We change the angle of incidence and measure the angle of refraction. What quantities should we plot in a graph so that the slope of the best fit straight line can be used to find the index of refraction n of this glass? Again, we can write an equation first. It's the refraction of light, so we can use Snell's law, n1 sine theta 1 equals to n2 sine theta 2. Medium 1 is air, so n1 is 1. And n2 is the index of refraction we're looking for, the n of the glass. Because our independent variable is theta 1, or the angle of incidence is theta i, and the dependent variable is theta 2, or theta r, the angle of refraction. So the two axes should be some form of theta i and some form of theta r. In order to obtain a linear equation, in this case, we have to use sine theta i for one axis and sine theta r for another axis. So if we use sine theta i for the y-axis, and use the sine theta r for the x-axis, then our graph should have a slope that is the n.